So I'm back with another episode of the GCN Tech Clinic where we help answer your technical bike related questions. And first up, I've got a great question from Dragana who asks, they're looking to buy a new helmet and they're wondering, will a black helmet generate more heat than a white one? Well, do you know what? I love a helmet question, so here we go. Uh, some of you will know I used to work actually for a helmet brand. And leading up to the Rio Olympics, I was in touch with quite a few riders who were wearing that brand of helmet at the Olympics. And they wanted to know if their helmet was cool enough for it. And that's in terms of comfort, obviously, not looks. So internally, we actually did some thermodynamic testing. And with the black outer shell, so the plastic shell of the helmet, that did retain slightly more heat than that of a lighter coloured one. However, that all really went into insignificance, the fact that the foam of the helmet, so the EPS, the styrofoam, people call it, uh, it doesn't actually transfer heat that well at all. So it wasn't getting through and affecting the comfort of a rider. Um, so basically, choose whatever sort of helmet you want. And also, a little fact there, we did also try to use some um, reflective silver paint uh, to try and actually bounce the, bounce the sun's rays away. But unfortunately, uh, the manufacturing process of it didn't really work very well and the chrome paint wouldn't really adhere to the plastic shell. So, it didn't work. But it was worth a try and uh, it was good fun doing that. So now I've got a question from Annie who asks, they have an Octolink bottom bracket and is there any compatible power meters available apart from the pedals based one available? Well, that's a great question. Uh, Octolink bottom brackets are not commonly used anymore. Basically, uh, it's a system from Shimano where your crank's attached to the bottom bracket spindle via eight splines. So it's an eight spline sided axle or spindle. Now they're not used that much anymore, but SRM, I do believe actually make one and it's the science model power meter that will fit. The problem is with that is that's actually more designed for a test facility because the cranks on them are actually extendable. So it's not really something that practical to go out on your bike because to be honest, it's gonna weigh quite a bit. Uh, what I would actually suggest is for the low cost of changing your bottom bracket is to do that and then you're gonna open up the door to way more options of a power meter. Alternatively, have a look around on eBay and you may well find an old standard road Octolink SRM chain set for you. Okay, now I've got a question from Chris who asks any tips for removing old discolored frame protection on a white down tube and chain stay? It came with a bike from you, it's really well stuck on, but it's now going yellow and needs replacing. Well, Chris, nobody likes a grubby frame protector. That's a fact. What I'd suggest, grab yourself a hairdryer and basically hover that over for quite a while it'll probably take and that's gonna soften the glue of those frame protectors and then you should be able to peel it off. If that doesn't work, basically just persevere and pick with your finger and just try and get it going. Once you get it going, try and pull it off in one big chunk. Now to remove any remaining glue, what I'd suggest is with an old rag, spray on some WD-40 or a product called Sticky Stuff Remover Yep, that's actually a real name of a product and I use it all the time. And just wipe that over the frame where the sticky stuff remains and it will go. Uh, now, if you're gonna reapply some frame protectors, make sure that that area is totally free of dirt, grime, dust, anything like that. Uh, ideally, get yourself an alcohol wipe and actually prepare the frame before applying the protector and you'll be good to go. Right, next up, a question from Joe who wants to know when will us commuters get a cycling bell that sits on or integrates with the hoods? So basically of drop handle bar brakes because they've moved over from a flat bar bike. Well, Joe, the great news for you is that I've actually cycled with someone who had this bell on their bike. So I know it exists. I've done a little bit of research for you as well. And it's produced by a company called Osaka who basically make bike bells. Quite a wide variety too. And it does in fact clip onto the brake hood and also I've seen it on some of the older STIs clip onto the cables that exit from the lever hood. Um, however, when I used to ride with this guy back in Belgium, every now and then the bell would just go off and he didn't mean for it to go off. Now I don't know if somehow he used to hit it when he changed gear, but we always knew when he was attacking because the bell would go off. So there we are. If you do get one, let me know how you get on with it and uh, if the random bell ringing happens for you too. Right, finally, a question from Mode Yusuf who asks, knee warmers over or under cycling shorts? 
Mm, that, that is a good one. Because uh, you don't want the fashion police coming after you. But in all seriousness, now if I'm going out on my own, and I know I'm going to be taking off my knee warmers probably after 15 or 20 minutes, something like that, I'll actually put them over my shorts. That way it's easier just to take them off whilst I'm riding along, no need to stop, nothing like that. But if I'm meeting up with some friends and I'm doing that, there's no way I'm going to do that because I'm going to get ridiculed. They're going to give me a really hard time. So ultimately, yeah, put them underneath your shorts really when you're going along. And now on the contrast, track cyclists who are on and off the track all the time during training sessions, they normally put them straight over the top because it's just easier to remove them. But for safety issues from fellow cyclists maybe giving you abuse for not fitting the rules, just put them underneath your shorts. They look better. Also, having them underneath your shorts is actually going to help them stay up more because you're going to have that extra layer of lycra over the top and likely the gripper around the edge of your shorts is going to hold them in place. So put them underneath your shorts. Now remember to leave your questions for us on all forms of social media using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Remember as well to like and share this video with your friends. And now for a great video on how the pros choose their stem length, click just down here.